upon 112,000 today. We don't want to die. Death is a constant reminder here. The more people we kill, we invent. You ain't supposed to be alive. Killing, shooting people, doing whatever I had to do. We have to make a living. I want him dead. I want his family dead. I know how to grind. I started from the bottom. Never ride on your friends. Race to rackets. It's rough on a black man. Hold up, we're going to pull this whole... First of all, Philly stand up. If Philly in here, y'all better let me know, man. Shout your block out in the comments. Now, I did a video back in January on Ron Harvey for Philly Black Mafia. If you miss it, go check that shit out. But if you think he was vicious, wait till you hear about Cabani Savage. And that's not his nickname neither. That's his government name. And he will live up to that last name. See, in Philly, we have legendary blocks. And I'm sure other cities do too. But guys would get rich off of one block. When guys used to die for a block, that's all they had. That's how they kept the lights on. The blood, sweat, and tears, going to war with different projects. Ethan Butler, North Philly. Cabani had that block by the balls. Let's get into it. Now, Cabani Savage is from Richard Island Projects, a crime control project where Joey Molino passed out turkeys. Now, if you don't know Skinny Joey, if you don't know Joey Molino, he's the Philly Mafia Don. And it's nothing new, we all know, so you South Philly dudes better chill. But Richard Island Projects is legendary. Philly Black Mafia will hold meetings in that location. But growing up, his father was selling drugs and decided to move to HP. That's Huntington Park. The father would end up getting sick from cancer. And at the age of 13, Cabani Savage was forced to be a man of the house. He would end up taking on boxing and staying out of trouble. It's funny because most people I know from North Philly used to box. But he would take on boxing but he still needed the funds to take care of the fam. He was selling them oils. He was selling them sherm oils for a couple of months. Then he would end up selling crack. He would give out testers for a day or two. Translation, he would give out work for free for the fiends to eventually return a buyer if they like it. Now, he saw how Ethan Butler was pure gold and he needed parts of that. One of his rivals named Tobias Flowers owned that corner and was making a killing. So Cabani Savage would use one of the 48 laws of power as a strategy. Crush your opponent by any means. Now, YouTube is already on my ass about the turf war video, so I can't get into detail of what he did to take over that block. But if you join the Upper Echelon membership on my channel, Cabani Savage vs. Tobias Flowers is right up. And I can say anything on there, so that's where I drop my reckless content without even getting in trouble. But we're gonna continue to rock out on a public channel. Cabani will eventually take over that block and several other blocks. With the money rolling in, and I mean the amount of money, that's life changing. He starts moving cocky. He named his drug operation Cabani Savage Organization and was stamping his name on all the product. He started to supply other drug dealers and became bigger than his mentor. He had his enforcers. A guy once tried to muscle in on Eighth and Pike Corner. Days later, he was erased. He ran an organization of murder. If he wanted something you had, you had to go. It was a guy operating in South Philly that wouldn't just play ball with him, that wouldn't listen to him. And he ended up shot with his car on fire. So this wasn't the man to play with. Now he had his sister handle the business side of things. Believe it or not, she was colder than him. She was like jukebox from power. But we're gonna make a video on her later. But the Cabani organization was doing well. The Connect Juan Rosado was blessing him with large amounts. Things were going good until Cabani Savage and Eugene Coleman would be arrested for a body and drugs. Now the lawyer would discuss with Cabani what the feds already had on him. The spots was bugged, so he's looking at some time. And his lawyer would stress one thing to him. He would say he needs to be smart and not dig the hole deeper. And he and his co-defendant needs to be on the same page. Now, it's always that one person in the crew that's different. Now, Coleman was surrounded by all killers, but Coleman just handled the drug part of the business. He wasn't with the wreck. 
Karada Savage, which is the little sister, made them catch a body in front of Coleman. So he would have a body on him. But she didn't trust him. When he was arrested, she would go to see him and check his temperature and hit him with question after question. She would question him on what he heard. What did he say? Don't say nothing. She was constantly sending him letters, stating death before the signer, asking questions. She was a manipulator. So the fans began coming at the Cavani Savage organization little by little. His connect was arrested and guys he did business with. He started to become paranoid. He reaches out back home trying to get home addresses to everyone he dealt with. Information on kids. The feds bugged his cell and called him talking crazy and this lawyer was pissed. He literally told him to fall back and don't dig the hole deeper. But it's Cabani Savage. He's arrogant and he's his own boss. No one could tell him anything. He thought murder could solve all his problems. October of 2004, Eugene Coleman would be set to testify against Cabani Savage. Now Cabani would see him in court and would try to intimidate Coleman doing a gun under the table motion and doing a slicing of the throat every time. Cabani Savage would head back to his cell and order the firebombing of Coleman's family and the baby sister, Kadala Savage, would put the play together. October 9th, 2004 at 5 a.m., two paid enforcers would commit the most deadliest crime in Philadelphia history at the time, leaving no survivors but firebombing the home of Coleman's family. Now, this goes back to what I said about Karada Savage, how cold she was and how she moved. We're gonna do a part two and continue the story with Karada Savage. It's gonna be a spinoff and shit about to get real. So get these likes up, comment, subscribe, support the channel and stay tuned. I'm out people.